Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with a reading vlog. I'll tell you, I feel like I'm kind of a little bit back in my reading slump. I'm on the search for a really good book and that's what I thought this vlog could be all about. Uh, I am really in the mood to read, kind of, but I can't make up my mind. The last couple of books that I read were not good at all. <laughs> I mean, we're just terrible, and I think that kind of started me down uh, kind of the path to a slump, so I'm trying to stave that off, but I'm also, you know, just kind of depressed. I went to Italy a couple of weeks ago, and my mom was saying that to me earlier today, she was saying, why do I feel so off? Like, why do I feel like I'm in a funk? Why am I depressed? And I said, yeah, that's what they call post-Italy depression. It's called last week this time, I was looking out my window at the Duomo and now I'm not. <laughs> so there's always, I think, a little hump to get over there and that's probably contributing to my reading mood a little bit. It is nonfiction November, so I should be reading my nonfiction picks, one of my nonfiction picks, and I'm currently reading The Story of My Life by Casanova, but it's a lot, and it's not something that I feel like I just want to sit and read straight through. So I feel like, especially if I'm going into a slump, like I need to get a fiction book in there. And so the book that I'm currently reading is not a doozy. That's Hester, which is a historical fiction book about the woman that supposedly inspired The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. And I picked this up from Book of the Month last month because I thought I was going to get another booth by Karen Joy Fowler. I feel like Book of the Month either chooses a truly fantastic historical fiction or one that is very, very mediocre to bad. And there's no in-between. So normally I want to just trust them and I want to just pick up their historical fiction pick, but I've been betrayed by them this year a couple of times, though Booth was one of their picks. Uh, and Booth is one of my favorite books of the year. This book is not bad. It's not bad, but it's not great. I feel like the book is really trying to be clever. So like so far we are following our main character, Isabel, who is from Scotland. And so we got like this whole backstory of her marrying a man who's basically twice her age and them getting down on their luck. And then they have to move to Salem, Massachusetts where she meets Nathaniel Hawthorne. All of that happened in the first 50 or so pages, which meant it felt like it happened very, very quickly. And I think that's probably one of the bad things about this book. I think it's a little bit too short. And I feel like the author is trying to reach a Hilary Mantel level in terms of prose. And reading this, it feels like it's trying a bit too hard to do that because for the most part, the prose is unremarkable and I don't think it's trying to be anything special. But then every now and again, the author will throw something in and I can tell that's meant to be the quotable moment. I can tell that's meant to be the point where we're supposed to tab something and it doesn't feel genuine to me. I feel like that's so mean to say, but it feels like the writing in this is hollow, but it wants to be something like Booth by Karen Joy Fowler or like Wolf Hall. And I think this is the author's debut. And so I do feel hope for their next books, but so far this one has been kind of a bore to me. I'm very interested in Nathaniel Hawthorne though. The moments when he is in the book are the moments that are just charged for me because there's something about him. And I personally find from the descriptions of him in this book, I think he's hot. <laughs> and I never in a million years thought I would be saying that, especially on camera in front of the World Wide Web that I think Nathaniel Hawthorne was probably a good looking guy. But uh, from this description, I would have been into him 100%. 100% I would have been into him. And those are the moments that work for me when Nathaniel Hawthorne is described. Like he's always described as a prince or a fallen nobleman. And that's really interesting knowing the history of the Hawthorne family, that the Hawthorne family was really something when Salem was first founded. And especially in the time around the witch trials. And that by the time Nathaniel Hawthorne is living, they're kind of falling on hard times. And so he's kind of a nobleman in name only. 
And I think it's really interesting to use old world structure and class description in reference, particularly to somebody like Nathaniel Hawthorne. I'm not saying that anybody has ever discussed him as kind of modern American royalty, but he is one of our most famous authors. And so I think it's interesting to use that language around him, especially knowing the history of the Hawthorne family. And that's one thing this book is also trying to explore is it's trying to parallel the Salem witch trials with the witch trials that were going on in Scotland in the 1600s. And I think that's interesting. But a lot of me is just wondering what this book is trying to be. I think the book is interesting, but I don't feel like the main idea or the main discussion point is fully formed enough for me. I'm kind of sitting here wondering what the point of the book is, which makes me wonder who the ideal audience for this is. Like, is she going to reach a point where she really critiques Nat Hawthorne? And I'll be interested to see that. But personally, right now, I'm just a little bit in love with him. Uh, and I knew that was true. When I read The Marble Fawn last year, I said, only a good looking man could have written this. And so it doesn't shock me to read these descriptions of him as like a brooding pretty boy. I, I know he was. I know he was. I'm going to look up a picture of him after this and I'll show you what he looks like and we can we can learn that together. I'm sure he was not the dreamboat that this book makes him out to be. But I'm going to finish this. I do think this has gotten better as it's gone along. But I think tonight we're going to go look at some Christmas decorations. I think that will really help me and get me in kind of a happier mood. So I'm looking forward to that. I'll carry you along with me. We don't need any Christmas decorations. Let's just go on and say that. Do we? No. Because my mom and I are obsessed with Christmas. And we have Christmas decorations that go back decades that we still use and then we add to it every single year but uh i personally just really love christmas so you never know i just like to see what's out there but that's what i'm currently reading i don't really know how i'm going to feel about it when all is said and done but i feel like it's pretty middle of the road right now there he is i'm not gonna lie to you he's cute his hairline needs some work in this painting but he's, he's not bad, he's not bad, but he's not as cute as she describes him in the book. the next morning. We did go out and look at Christmas stuff. Y'all will be proud. We didn't get anything. I think though that was largely due to the fact that there wasn't a lot to be seen anywhere. We went to at home and Hobby Lobby and like I see people going to at home all the time on YouTube. Like I just recently saw Chandler Ainsley go there and like get these gorgeous like um gingerbread house centerpieces for her kitchen table and I get the sense that other people's at-home stores must just be giant and massive and we really just don't have a big one or we don't have one that's well stocked. But anyways, uh, so we didn't do anything, but I do feel like it lifted my mood a little bit. But as you might can hear, I am struggling through a cold. I felt that coming on since we got home and I thought I got over it, but uh, no. <laughs> so here we are, but update time. I am over halfway through Hester. I have not started out the morning reading really at all. Like I thought I was going to do an impromptu 24 hour readathon. And I think I may still at least read the majority of the afternoon away, but I just didn't automatically get up this morning and start trying to finish this and then move into something else. I just was not feeling it yet this morning, but I feel like I want to finish this and then maybe shift to a Kindle read and read something that I think is going to be kind of quick and easy to get through. But I'm about halfway through Hester. And I mean, I just feel, actually, I don't know that I feel anything. Like, I just feel very blandly towards this book. I don't feel like 
anything is happening of major importance, if that makes sense. Like, it's just like we're getting a slice of life of these characters. And maybe in the end, that's the point. But I'm kind of like waiting for the shoe to drop that is the Scarlet Letter, that is the point of what this character means to Nathaniel Hawthorne's like creative process. All he says is like, I'm writing a character and she looks exactly like you. And when I saw you the first time, I thought the character had come to life and like meeting you, I've decided to give the character a better ending. And I'm still sitting here like, is that really Hester? <laughs> I just feel very blandly about this, sad to say. So I think it's probably maybe a two, 0.5 three star read. I mean, it's fine and it's not a bad book, but when I've read books that are really, really good and that were really hard to put down, I'm, I'm feeling like this one is just not that special to me. One thing I do appreciate about it and what I like is like between chapters, we get a flashback of the ancestor of our main character, Isabel, who was prosecuted for witchcraft in Scotland. And then the next chapter, at the end of that chapter, we will get a perspective about Nathaniel Hawthorne's ancestor, who was one of the judges at the Salem Witch Trials. And of course, I'm going to say it, those parts are far more interesting than like, uh, the main storyline of the book. And I think the book itself would be more interesting if that conversation about witchcraft was one that the characters were presently having. And I think maybe the book is going to move there in the second half, but right now I don't really have high hopes for it. So our journey to finding a great book is not really starting off all that well. But since I'm struggling through my cold, I don't think the next few days that I'll do very much. And so hopefully I can read. I'll update you again later. Hopefully when I finish this, I really do feel like I can finish it today. Well, I finished Hester. I have really no complex thoughts or emotions about this and I don't really even know what to rate it. I think I just gave in and rated it two stars on Goodreads because I felt so little for it. And throughout the reading process, I just wasn't very interested in picking the book back up when I set it down. And I mean, it was a short book. That's basically why I didn't DNF it. If the book had been any longer, I absolutely would have DNF'd it. But this was just not my cup of tea. And I think in general, I would have to say I need to learn this about myself. This style of historical fiction is not my favorite, where somebody is like going in and filling in the background of a fictional story, because I don't feel like it was handled the best here. I don't feel like it was done particularly well. Uh, and I don't feel like for the book to have been about the setup for Hester and the Scarlet Letter. I don't feel as though the book addressed the Scarlet Letter in any meaningful way. Like one thing about this book, I feel like it's kind of a spoiler, is kind of the reason why it's called the Scarlet Letter, like why there is a letter that is a color. That was one of the elements that didn't bother me and I felt like it worked, but I also felt like that part of the book was heavy handed. And I feel like there was a large majority of this book that felt as though it was just trying to be clever. And I think it wanted you to put things together before it reached the conclusion or before it reached the climax. And I don't necessarily think that it worked all that well here. I just really found this one lackluster. I'll be interested to see what other reviews of this are because to me, this is probably one of the more disappointing reads of the year to me, but I can't even say that. Like, I just genuinely didn't feel anything towards it. It wasn't truly a negative experience, but it definitely wasn't a positive experience. I wasn't excited about this at all. Uh, so I'm kind of glad this is over, but I did rate it two stars. I think that's probably exactly where it should be. So... I don't know if any more reading will get done tonight, but I will keep you updated. We finally have a winner. I have finally started a book that I feel like I'm really invested in, that I'm really excited about, and that is really great. And that means that this vlog is actually a success because I was on the hunt for a new book to feel emotionally invested in. That is The Cloisters by Katie Hayes, which is another book of the month pick. And so I'm also doing something else that I really wanted to do and I feel like I need to do, which is look at my shelves 
and look over all of my book of the month picks that I haven't read yet and kind of assess whether or not I'm still interested in them. And this was actually one of the picks for November. And I had heard a little bit about this before book of the month picked it. And it's kind of a gothic, uh, a little bit like a dark academia type story. To me it is anyway, even though it is more set kind of in the museum realm than truly specifically academia. But it follows this girl who goes to work at the Cloisters for an internship one summer. And the Cloisters is a museum in New York that is basically a re-erected medieval monastery that like they got all the parts of this monastery in Europe in the 1930s and brought them over here and basically rebuilt a medieval collection and a medieval cathedral. And of course the collection is all about uh, medieval art and thus it's, it's hitting a lot of marks for me and our main character like her point of interest and her point in research is the early Italian Renaissance. And specifically, she is interested in Ferrara, which I think is interesting because I very rarely see anybody focus on that. And the book makes a point to mention that it is very odd for somebody to focus on that. But I really am loving this because I have to say, this book has like a thriller element to it. Book of the Month labeled it as a thriller. I'm over 100 pages in and I'm intrigued, but I don't know that I would call it a thriller yet. But I really think this hits the same marks for me as The Secret History. I think if you have been looking for a book that feels similar tonally to The Secret History, like getting sucked into a secret world, being involved in a group uh, that maybe is exclusive, to me, The Cloisters really feels like that. It encapsulates kind of like that secluded feeling of you being among your peers. And I really, really love this. And I love it in a way that I didn't love the secret history just because I am so much more of a medieval girl than a classical girl. And so this really hits the mark for me. I don't think the characterization is nearly as strong as the secret history and the writing is not nearly as beautiful. So. I mean, take that recommendation with a grain of salt, but I do think it really hits the same beats as The Secret History. I really think tonally and thematically, it is one I would compare to it when a lot of people would just compare all dark academia books and say, well, if you like The Secret History, you'll like this. I really think the setup of this book is very similar because there is like an occult element to this. Like some of the research interests are in tarot cards and occultism of the late Middle Ages, early Renaissance, which is fascinating. Uh, really, really fascinating. And I am just currently loving this. I really, really love this. I will update you one last time and then I will finally shut the vlog down. Today it is Saturday. We're kind of, uh, reviewing fall stuff today. Sad. Uh, we're not taking anything down, but we're kind of evaluating stuff, getting rid of some things, and going on and getting prepared for Christmas, believe it or not, because that'll be here before you know it. So that's what's going on with me today. And then hopefully I will have some journaling time and I can have time to craft. But I'm really enjoying the cloisters and I'm so excited that I found something that was really, really good. Book of the Month is so hit or miss for me. And when they hit, they hit really hard. And that's why I'm still a member of their program. Like when I get a book from them that I love, I do truly love it. But I feel like there are some real mediocre picks in there. So I, I really don't know how to evaluate my relationship with them as a company because I think they do some really interesting things by like promoting debut authors. But when you are picking a book by a debut author, it can be a bit of a risk because you don't know how they write yet. You don't know whether you're going to click with their style. And personally, this has me really intrigued and I hope that Katie Hayes writes more in this line. There's still time for the book to lose me because since it is kind of a mystery thriller, I think 
it's going to be interesting to learn what the mystery thriller element of it is. I think I know, but I think what's going to turn it for me is how they handle it. So I'm waiting to see how this goes, but I really am enjoying it right now. So it's a couple of days later. I fully intended to end the vlog. I mean, days ago. I never intended for it to become an actual weekly reading vlog, though at this point, <laughs> that's what it is. But I did finish The Cloisters yesterday. I finished it in like a fugue state. And it was so good. I mean, it was so good. I rated it five stars. And I can't believe that, but it really means that the vlog was a success. I did actually find a book that I was really excited about. But do you ever just get the feeling when you're reading a book that the author wrote it with you in mind. That's the way the cloisters felt to me. And I think in many ways, like I compared it earlier to the secret history. To me, I feel like I liked it more than the secret history because I am more of a medieval girl. And so I really liked the topics and the themes that the book was playing with. That was really interesting to me in a way, not necessarily in a way that the secret history wasn't, but in a way that was a little bit more intriguing and a little bit more relatable actually to me and to my past in academia. And I really liked the discussion of academia in here because it also played with the idea of the exclusivity of knowledge and of information and how academia typically likes to reward someone who life has been easy for, like someone who has gotten all of the achievements and gotten everything that they wanted, but really didn't have to strive for it, didn't have to really work for it. Academia like sometimes criticizes you when you have put in a lot of effort, when you've done a lot of internships, when you've done all these different jobs, but you've never been full time. There is like a judgment level there that was so relatable to me, it felt as if the book was calling me out. So I really enjoyed how it presented academia and specifically history academia and the academia of the archive. And I personally just found it really relatable. It also, I think, took me out of it a couple of times though, because since I have experience in that, I was just like, this is so unbelievable. Like nobody would just offer you a job like this. Like if so, we'd all, we'd all be working <laughs> uh, full time. We'd all be working at the Met or something like that. But I really, really enjoyed this because for me, this was a dark academia book that really hit a lot of personal marks. And I found relatable to my own experience of academia which, you know, has not always been positive. I think we all go into academia thinking, well, I'm going to be the exception to the rule. I'm going to become a tenured professor. I'm going to become the National Archivist of the United States of America. And it's not, it's not going to happen like that. Like, it's a very exclusive field. Academia is very small. Everyone knows everyone. And so it's just like, a very insular community that is not very healthy, to be frank, um, and is also sometimes very, very critical. And it's hard to be a part of it. It's hard to fight for your place among the people in academia. And that is what this book dealt with so brilliantly, in my opinion, and dealing with research. And do you want to share your research with someone who you know would probably take credit for it because they're a man and a curator and they're somebody who's been in the field a really long time? Or do you want to keep this to yourself so that this can build hopefully your career and then you won't have to struggle? I don't know, I really liked it. And I can see that there were some mixed reviews on it. And frankly, I understand them, really, I do. But for me, it was just a personal call out book and some of the quotes in it were so great and we're so beautiful and we're just so evocative of things that I am into. I really, really loved it. So I rated it five stars and I am finally going to wrap up the weekly reading vlog here because uh, I did finish a book that I really enjoyed. So the vlog was a success. I did not intend for this to go on for a full week, but here we are. So. Uh, I would love to know down below if you have read any of these books. I would love to know a book that's really been holding your attention lately, a book that you've been really excited about. But that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.